Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Chow House. Today we'll be doing a Taiwan night market favorite, big fried chicken cutlets. Mabel, how do you say it in Mandarin? Ji pai. Yep, ji pai. So, hashtag fried chicken life. We're going to be doing this using the air frying method and deep frying methods, so let's get started. By the way, the air fryer one tasted pretty damn good, so you're going to want to check this out. So one of the main characteristics of a good ji pai is that it's big, right? I mean, size matters, guys. Don't let anyone tell you different. Uh, the first thing we gotta do is butterfly our chicken breast to get that nice big shape and also to get it to a nice even thickness. There are multiple ways you can do this. You can start from the inside like I did here, hold your knife horizontally and find a low spot and sort of carefully slice and spread apart the meat without cutting all the way through it. The next step can get kind of messy, so maybe you want to get the family out of the room. Maybe wait until they're all asleep or something. Get some tissues, maybe even some lotion? I don't know. But we're gonna start beating that meat. The aim here is just to flatten out the high spots and even out the thickness of the chicken. You don't want to beat that meat too hard. The breast is sort of delicate after being butterflied, and you don't want it to be falling apart. Beating the meat a little bit will make it a little bit more tender, cut down on the marinating time, and cook the chicken more evenly. If you don't have a meat mallet like this, you can just use something like a rolling pin or maybe even a skillet or something. Just keep in mind that the meat will shrink and get a little smaller as it cooks, so try to get it as thin and spread out as possible without breaking up the meat. So after taking care of that chicken, we're going to get the marinade ready, and I have a blender here. I'm going to blend all these ingredients together, but you can also just use a knife to mince all the ingredients or a food processor if you don't have a blender. First, we're going to put in half a medium-sized yellow or sweet onion, and I just recently learned that onions contain enzymes that help tenderize meat. Uh, it's from an anime called Food Wars, Shokugeki no Soma. The first season is on Netflix currently, and it's kind of awesome. It's kind of pervy, but the cooking knowledge in that show is kind of amazing. Um, highly recommend it. Anyways, next up we're gonna add about three cloves of garlic, a knob of ginger. You don't even have to peel the ginger if you're just gonna blend it. Um, half a teaspoon of five spice, a few dashes of white pepper, about two teaspoons of sugar, and about two tablespoons of light soy sauce. The ginger not only adds flavor, it also contains some enzymes that tenderize the meat, and the soy sauce, besides making things salty, will help the chicken retain its moisture while cooking. Now all you gotta do is blend everything together until it's smooth. I added about a half cup of water here to get things blending smoothly, and also I forgot to add a, bla <laughs> a splash of Shaoxing wine, so I'm just adding it now. After the blending is done, just pour it over your chicken, try to move the chicken around so the marinade has contact with all surfaces of the chicken, and set it aside on the counter for about an hour or longer in the fridge while we prepare the breading and seasonings. For the spice mix that gets sprinkled over the chicken after cooking, it's just two parts salt, one part five spice, one part white pepper, a half part sugar, I usually see ji pai with some type of bright red spicy seasoning on it, so I'm also putting in some red chili powder. Alright, so once your chicken is done marinating, we'll start off with the deep frying method, and make sure your oil is hot and ready at about 350 degrees Fahrenheit while you're breading your chicken, because the breading will get gunky, it'll get a bit sticky if it's not fried shortly after the breading, and you're gonna be sad, it's gonna stick to the plate. So please, just get that oil ready before breading. I have the usual breading station here. Plate on the right is just all-purpose flour. Middle is some scrambled eggs. On the left is two parts sweet potato starch and one part corn starch. About a teaspoon of salt, about a teaspoon of baking powder. I think breading it this way results in a bit lighter and crispier exterior if you're willing to put in the effort. But if you want to do it, um, a breading that's just sweet potato starch, salt, baking powder, that definitely still works. I think it's actually how they do it in the night markets because it's obviously more convenient. Anyways, if you want to bread it this way, rinse off your chicken from the excess marinade. It'll make things a lot easier, trust me. 
and coat it in the flour on all sides, then coat it in the egg on all sides, and then finally coat it in the sweet potato starch mixture. Then tap off the excess starch and it's ready for the fryer. I've got some peanut oil here at a medium heat, 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and we'll be doing the double frying method. So we'll cook this for about two minutes and then take it out. So after the first fry while the chicken was chilling out, I just brought the oil back to 375 degrees Fahrenheit this time on medium high heat. And we're just going to do the second fry for about a minute or so until the chicken's golden brown and just take it out. It'll be ready to be seasoned. Alright, so for the air frying method, you're definitely going to want to just take your marinated chicken, lightly wipe off some of the excess marinade, and coat it in the sweet potato starch directly. Tap off some of the excess starches, and then immediately go into the non-heated air fryer. Coat the top with some oil, and I set my air fryer to 380 degrees Fahrenheit, and it'll take about 12 to 15 minutes total time cooking. At the halfway point, we're going to spray oil on any dry starch spots, flip it over, and also spray oil on those dry spots, because no one's got time for dry chicken. Come on. By the way, the reason why we skip the flour, egg, and then starch dredge for the air frying method is because one, it's more convenient. I mean, it's all about convenience with the air fryer, for the most part. And then number two, in our testing, the coating just didn't really stick very well to the chicken, and it was pretty sad, so... My pain is your gain, guys. If you believe in yourself, you can also make good G-Pie in an air fryer. So after about 12 to 15 minutes of total cooking time in the air fryer, coating is looking golden brown. Everything should be cooked all the way through. The chicken breasts were pretty cut pretty thin, so the cooking time is pretty short. It's all ready to be seasoned and served. So you can see here the air fryer one is on the left and the deep fried one is on the right. Visually not that much difference. Texturally the deep fried one does have a more robust crispy coating due to the instant heat of the deep fryer, but the air fried one was still satisfyingly crispy. Flavor wise, pretty much the same. Don't skimp on that marinade, the soy sauce really helps the chicken retain its moisture while cooking and the onion and ginger helped make the meat more tender. Well, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more Asian street food favorites and also some Food Wars recipes in the near future. Hit the notification bell down below to get notified when we upload something and we'll see you guys later.